Number 32. The volume of an automobile airbag was 66.8 liters when inflated at 25 degrees Celsius with 77.8 grams of nitrogen gas. What was the pressure in the bag in kilopascals, KPA? Okay, so let's first figure out which formula we're going to use. With the gas chapter, it's a little bit tricky because there's a lot of different formulas. The easiest way to go about this is list out your variables. So let's, let's just read it again, and let's just list out the variables. So they said that we had a volume of 66.8 liters. So I know that I have a V, a volume. Maybe I'll just make this a little bit bigger. V equals 66.8 liters. Beautiful. And when this was inflated, it was at a certain temperature. So I'm going to say I have a temp value. 25 degrees Celsius. Cool. Now they tell us that we have 77.8 grams of nitrogen gas. Now, maybe I'm not too sure what this would be. Maybe it's a mass, right? Maybe we'll just say mass M equals, right? So my mass is 77.8 grams. But now, remember guys, nitrogen gas, how would we write this down? Would we just write N? Mm, not really. Remember, nitrogen gas, nitrogen is a diatomic. We learned this all the way back. We got to remember those diatomics. That's Brinkelhoff, right? So nitrogen is part of your diatomics, so this would be N2. Okie dokie. And now they're asking for the pressure. So I'm just going to say P equals question mark. And they want it specifically in kilo pascals. Okie dokie. So now, just analyze. Here, we have one value for a single variable. I don't see any sets, meaning I don't have two uh, vol volumes, I don't have two temperatures, I don't have two pressure values, so I have one of each. If this is the case, you're going to be using the ideal gas law, which is this one. PV equals NRT. I have no sets, so I can't use my combined gas law. Actually, let me just pull this down. I think I might have done, yeah, let's just leave it. <laughs> but anyway, now, the ideal gas law, PV equals NRT, is very, very, very specific in terms of units. So if we're using this, the pressure, the P, has to be an ATM. But we're solving for the pressure, so that's not really a big deal. We know that the, num the number, when it comes out, is going to be an ATM. V, the volume, has to be in liters. So I just like to check as I go along, but they gave it to me in liters, so I'm good. N is the number of moles. Uh-oh, I don't see any moles here. So I have to get moles, right? Where can I get the moles? Oh, that's why they told me the mass. We know how to go. We know how to go from a gram value to a mole value, and that's why we needed to make sure that we knew what nitrogen gas was. So let's just do that conversion. Let's go from grams of N2 to moles of N2. Now, let's just quickly do dimensional analysis, because that's how we convert, right? 77.8, and that's grams of N2. So this will be like a little refresher. Times by a ratio, if you don't want that unit, that goes on the opposite side. So on the bottom here, we want moles of N2. And remember, a gram to mole conversion of the same compound is the periodic table. So I had to use my periodic table, PT. One mole of the N2 is always the molar mass on the periodic table. So I have two nitrogens. Each nitrogen is 14.01. I'm going to times it by two. So I get 28.2. 28.02. Cancel out the grams. And now let's just do some math. We do 77.8 divided by the 28.02. And I guess let's just count it after three sig figs. So 2.78 moles of N2. Okay, this is the unit that I'm going to use, or the number that I'm going to use for this. Maybe I'll just get rid of 
I'll just say MOLS. I usually say MOLS for moles. Now the R value is a constant value. It's the constant gas, uh, it's the gas constant, right? For this formula, it's the 0 0.0821. The units for this, if you wanted to know, has all the other units. That's why this, this equation is so specific. So it's ATM times liter over mole times Kelvin. And with that the case, can you tell me what the unit of temperature would be in? Yeah, it's got to be in Kelvin. So let's see. Oh, they gave it to me in Celsius. So I got to convert to Kelvin. Ay ay ay. How do I go from Celsius to Kelvin? Yeah, we just plus 273, or you could plus 273.15, but I'm just going to plus 273. This would be 298, and now I'm ready to rock and roll. So we're solving for P. We know all the other variables, so let's go for it. So I have X. I like to just label it as X times V, which was 66.8, equals the moles, which I just found, 2.78, that was from the mass, times the constant, 0 0.0821, and then times by 298. Looks like I just want to get X by itself, so I would divide by the 66.8, and then I'll do that on this side. This will get rid of this. Goodbye. And now we have X equals, you could multiply all this, get one number, and then divide by 66.8. So let's see. 2.78 times 0 0.0821 times 298. And then I'm going to divide that by 66.8. Uh, with three sig figs, we'll say 1 1.02. And that's pressure has to be an ATM if you're using this formula. So this has to be an ATM. But now we just have to read the question carefully. It did say they wanted that pressure in kilopascals. So we have it in ATM. All we have to do is just convert into kilopascals. Conversion, just like we did before, is just dimensional analysis. So 1.02, that's ATM, times by ratio throw ATM on the bottom, and in this case we want kilopascals, KPA. Now here is the list of big four that you guys should memorize, and they're all equal to each other. These are the big four pressure units, ATM, which is atmospheres, TOR, MMHD, which is millimeters of mercury, and then kilopascals. Pick the one that Pick the two that you basically need to work with. I'm just going to use 1 ATM, which equals 101.325 kilopascals. So 1 ATM on the bottom equal to 101.325. ATMs cancel out, and now you're left with the kilopascals. So 1.02 times 101.325, and... Let's just do three sig figs. So this would be 103 kilopascals, KPA. And that's it. Hopefully this helped, all right? Guesses are a little bit tricky, but just remember, just write out all your variables and then analyze what you got. Then pick the right formula. That's it, guys. Hopefully this helped. Thank you so much for tuning in. Um, let's keep rocking and rolling, keep working hard. Good luck on your future tests and quizzes, and I will see you all in later lessons. And if you want to help us out, please press the subscribe button. But if not, that's okay too. All right. I appreciate you all. Thank you so much for viewing the video. I hope you guys are learning and I will see you in later lessons. Bye-bye.